All right, so this is a typical Gibbs free energy calculation question. This is a nice six marker that we're going to go through just now. Um, the other six marker that you can get under the thermodynamics Gibbs free energy topic is the graphical ones. If you've done any sort of past papers, you would have seen them so far. Um, I'll go through that in another video. Um, but in this one, it's just the case of doing a simple calculation, uh, rearranging the expression as needed, putting in all our variables. So first off, as always, let's just read through the question. Now, this is meant to be an interactive video where you attempt the question yourself, see where you go wrong and take it from there. Practice makes perfect in chemistry. So we've got a titanium four chloride, which can be made from titanium four oxide as shown in this equation here, giving us this equation. And we have our enthalpy change here of minus 60 kilojoules per mole. So straight away, you should be thinking exothermic reaction. Um, we, that may not be incredibly useful for this question, but in other energetics and thermodynamics question, the fact that we know it's exothermic can be incredibly useful. Now we have a typical data table here of our entropy of our reactants and products, and we have to use the equation to calculate the Gibbs free energy in this reaction at 989 degrees Celsius. And we have to give our answer to the appropriate number of significant figures. So AQA loves this. What is the appropriate number? So this is three sig figs. This is three. This is three. This is three. So I'd stick with three throughout this. Um, even though this is technically two, stick with three to be on the safe side. And we have to use our answer to explain whether this reaction is feasible. Now there's a very simple one liner that I'm going to show at the end of this question. Um, just memorize it and you'll always be able to input it into your answer. So first off, what do we have to do here? Now with any of these calculation questions, I'm just going to get my equation on the page. This is going to be juicy marks for our working here. So delta G, our Gibbs free energy, equals our enthalpy change minus T, our temperature, delta S. This is our equation, just memorize this, pretty simple equation to remember. Next thing is I'm going to convert our degrees Celsius into our standard units for temperature and chemistry, which is Kelvin. So all you have to do there is temperature equals 989 degrees Celsius plus 273. And that's going to give us an answer in Kelvin of 1262. Right, so what's next? Let's do our entropy change because we've got this value right here. We've got the enthalpy given to us in the question at minus 60 kilojoules per mole. We've got our temperature. So all that's left is our entropy change. Now, another equation, surprise, surprise, entropy change equals, what does this equal? Do you remember? So equals sum of the entropies of our products minus the sum of our entropy reactants. Okay, simple as that. So we've got our juicy products minus our reactants. Right, so let's get that on the page. So we have our products, which is this side, minus our reactants, which is this side. So let's do our carbon monoxide, which is right here. So 198. Now, molar ratio is always important in calculations. So we're gonna be doing one to two to two to two to one. Just jotting that down there so we have a note of it. Next, so let's do carbon monoxide. So we're gonna have two lots of the carbon monoxide, 198. And then we're gonna plus the titanium chloride, which is 253. Perfect, so let's just bracket all of that. Next one, we're going to be having our titanium oxide reactant, 50.2 going to be adding to that our two moles of carbon. So that would be two lots of 5.7. And we're also going to be adding our two moles of chlorine gas. So that's two lots of 223. Bracket all of that again. Now, all you have to do here is chuck that in your calculator. And you should get the answer of 141.4. And that would be in joules per Kelvin per mole as we see here, given to us in the question. Now, any of these thermodynamics questions, I always recommend to just pay attention to the units of the energy that we've been given. So you may know that things like entropy is in joules per Kelvin per mole, and then things such as enthalpy change is normally in kilojoules per mole. Um, so these always have to be consistent. So we're either going to be working with kilojoules per something, 
or joules per something and these have to be equal in order for the calculation to be correct so first thing i'm actually going to do is chuck this and make this capital i don't know if that was clear but this has to be a capital k right so we have our variable of delta s now we just did that so what we can do is just plug these into our equation here so delta g our gibbs free energy is going to equal our minus 60 enthalpy change now at this stage you can either convert the um, the enthalpy change into joules per mole or you can convert the entropy change into kilojoules per kelvin per mole now it's asked for this value into appropriate number of significant figures. Joules is always going to give you a large number, so in the thousands. Um, but a kilojoules number is going to be quite easy to put to three significant figures. So I always suggest trying to use the kilojoules where possible. So I'm going to leave this minus 60 kilojoules per mole here as it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck it in brackets and then we're going to minus our T delta S here. So our temperature, as we looked before, is just 1262. And then in brackets, I'm going to put our entropy value here, our 141.4. Now this is in joules, so we have to divide it by a thousand. The same thing is times 10 to the minus three. Try and get into the habit of using this sort of standard form. It can make things incredibly quick when you're doing these calculations. Or when you're putting it in the calculator, you could just do divided by a thousand. It's up to you, which, whichever you find easier and how strong your maths abilities are. So this is going to give us a value if we put it in our calculator of minus 238.45. And the units for that is kilojoules per mole. All right. So we have to put this to three significant figures. So all we're going to do here is just round it to 238. So that'll be our final answer, minus 238. So then next thing would be to answer this with a closing statement. We need to explain whether this reaction is feasible. So then our closing statement would simply be Gibbs free energy, delta G, is less than zero. Therefore, the reaction is feasible. Perfect. So that would be our six marks right there. You're going to be getting one mark for the delta S minus uh, a sum of S products minus sum of S reactants. That'll be one mark there. You're going to be getting another mark for the actual correct answer here. Then we're going to be getting a mark. Like I said, chuck the equation on the page. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Believe this or not, this is a mark in itself. Always useful. Next thing would be our actual answer. So this is going to be our 200 minus 238 kilojoules per mole to three sig figs. Next up is going to be the mark for our closing statement. Now let's say, for example, we had a different question where this final answer was positive and they ask you to explain whether the reaction is feasible. All you would simply say is the converse argument. So you would say delta G is greater than zero, therefore the reaction, the reaction is not feasible. Okay, perfect. So hopefully that was of some help to you. Uh, like the video if it was, and request any topics that you're really struggling with with past papers, and I'll do my best to make a video on it. Best of luck with your upcoming exams. Peace.